Welcome to the Red Pill Media. It's September the 18th, 2022. Immigration has never been a workable item in this country. For several decades, there's been no new legislation that's been written. That's because both sides of the aisle refuse to work together to come to amicable solutions to help improve the system of immigration in this country. Recently, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, did a PR stunt by sending a busload of Venezuelans who crossed the border in Texas, not Florida, to prove a point. Well, I want to teach Ron a lesson, probably a lesson he knows nothing about. In the 60s, Southern organizations tried sending African Americans to Northern states in a cheap PR stunt, as he did. And it was designed to embarrass and expose Northern liberals. And guess what? That didn't work either. In the spring of 1962, a black man by the name of David Harris, who was a short order cook from Little Rock, Arkansas, he arrived in a small town in Massachusetts. It's, uh, it was called Hyannis. It's a small vacation village just located on Cape Cod. It was best known then and now as the location of the Kennedy family's summer compound. Harris traveled to this small town in search of work with funding and encouragement from Little Rock's White Citizens Council, one of many local organizations comprised of middle-class white professionals who, while dedicated to the preservation of segregation, styled themselves as a respectable, moderate alternative to the Ku Klux Klan. And earlier that year, council members in New Orleans and Little Rock dreamed of a public relations stunt, as Ron DeSantis did. They would offer black Southerners bus fare and relocation costs to undertake reverse freedom rides to Northern cities where they told their victims good jobs and housing awaited them. The idea was to embarrass and expose the hypocrisy of Northern liberals who cheered the real freedom rides, but whom they suspected would blanch at receiving thousands of black transplants in their own communities. Harris was just the first of roughly 100 black Southerners whom the councils shipped to Highness. In this particular case, the Citizens Council had a specific target in mind, Edward M. Kennedy the president's younger brother, who was campaigning for a seat in the United States Senate. President Kennedy's brother assured you a grand reception to Massachusetts. The council's leadership assured them good jobs, housing, etc. are promised. Kennedy, a summer resident of Hyannis, called the segregationists a bluff. He organized a reception for Harris comprised of local residents who extended a warm welcome. The story of the reverse freedom rides assumed new meaning this week when persons seemingly associated with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis promised a group of Venezuelan asylum seekers that good jobs and housing, as well as expedited work permits, awaited them in Boston. The migrants were transported instead without their knowledge to Martha's Vineyard in an attempt to surprise and expose the hypocrisy of liberals who oppose the Republican Party's hardline immigration stance. Well, the ploy didn't work out exactly as planned. The residents of the small island warmly embraced the asylum seekers, much as the citizens of Hyannis welcomed David Harris some 60 years earlier. The two stories share some similar characteristics. In both cases, elected officials attempted to pin their critics in a corner. In neither case did the ploy immediately succeed, though today's story has yet to play out. The reverse freedom riders were not a constructive attempt to address a broad political and social problem. They were, as President Kennedy said then, and as President Biden says now, a rather cheap exercise. Good day.